Okay, good morning traders. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar. Today is Thursday, March 29th. We just got the release of Canada GDP figures coming out weaker than expected uh, for the month of January. We were looking for a print of 0 0.1 month on month, came in at negative 0 0.1. Year on year, 2.9 was expected. Uh, that came in at 2.7, albeit there was a slight upward revision to the previous month's print. So you're seeing some CAD weakness here. Dollar CAD is making a run higher. No change to any of the levels that we've been following. So if we do get a stretch near 26, uh, 2969, 2968, this region here, um, still looking for the um, exhaustion trade there. Also did get the release of uh, the PCE numbers for the US. Core personal consumption came in at 1.6%, right in line with expectations. So no change there. Le last thing left on tap for today, guys, will be the University of Michigan confidence surveys at 10 o'clock. Uh, could prompt some more dollar action, but great to see you guys in the room. Uh, Jaya, good morning to you. Iman, always a pleasure. Um, Mark, Peter, P. Oh, we got four Pete's in here today. All of you are here. Great to see you guys. Ruth, uh, happy Friday or happy Thursday to you. Uh, although it is more of a Friday, markets will be closed tomorrow. Um, an observance of Good Friday. Obviously, it's Easter this uh, Sunday. It's the last day for all intents and purposes of trade for the month and for the quarter. So if you saw that we were a little bit timid uh, last two days, that's on purpose. You want to be very, uh, tread very lightly here. The only thing that's really been grabbing my attention is uh, Aussie dollar. And if that was the low, um, I'll be pretty uh, irked, but certainly we're, we're coming into some key, key areas of support for Aussie. And that's what we'll be focused on. So we'll start off with that. Uh, we'll jump back into the dollar CAD um, and we'll come back and look at this uh, real quick. Sterling CAD and gold from last night. Previous updates, we'll talk about dollar yen. Uh, just ripped, okay? Just ripped face. So guys, end of the month flows, end of the quarter flows tend to exacerbate that move even more. Took us right through our bearish invalidation level. I'm not touching dollar yen at this point. The yen and the Swissy were both um, the worst performers yesterday. Uh, versus the dollar, meaning they both dollar yen and uh, Swiss dollar move lower, dollar yen move higher. And certainly, um, you know, kind of puts a wrench in the uh, in the broader setup. So we'll go over dollar yen where that stands. SPX, you know, major, major support. Uh, we've been watching that level. We'll circle back to the DXY, Euro dollar, and then we'll wrap up with a quick look at what Aussie, Aussie yen is doing at this point. Still holding a, a pretty decent range, nothing really crazy there. Um, but the levels remain pretty clear. All right. Any other questions or trade setups, as usual, guys, at any point throughout the session, feel free to throw them on the message board. Let's circle back to Aussie. You know, we've been talking about this level for weeks. Seems like months. 76.35, 76.36, huge Fibonacci confluence of both longer term and near term Fibonacci levels. Also converges on former slope resistance, decent pivot in price, and current slope support for the operative uptrend we've been in since the 2016 lows. So look, we just grazed the top end of that support zone. So I'm not, you know, uh, Degon's not in the room, but he sent me a trade that he had, had put on. He wanted some critiquing on it. So if he comes in, we'll go over it. But, um, you know, I'm not of the mindset that this is necessarily completely it. If we get another drop in, I think it would give us the opportunity to try to fade. But if Aussie's going to find some meaningful support, you know, this is pretty much it, guys. 76.11, 76.12, just a bit lower, constitutes 100% extension from the decline off the highs we made for the year. That actually coincides a little bit more dead on with slope, okay, from that 2016 low. So, you know, maybe another turn and drop into here before the reversal, I don't know. You've been getting some divergence on the decline. You're coming off of basic slope support. You know, we'll have to assess how this starts off the month. Right here, guys, where we are right now. And again, Degon was asking me if I took that trade yesterday. Um, unfortunately, I didn't. This was actually obviously a very clear uh, cut entry. This was the support level we were looking at. You were getting divergence into the low. You had a trigger break. All indications you should have taken this. I just wasn't here. I wanted to see how we, um, and where, with where we are in market conditions, close of the month, close of the quarter. I just get real, real shy away from these positions and trying to fade moves because nothing's really stopped this in thin market conditions just to slamming down in 76, getting me stopped out, and then continuing higher. Also, all things held constant, it was the trade that we were looking for. So, um, you know, if Degon comes in the room here, I'll, I'll break it down to him again. But if you're holding longs, 
Um, you know, obviously the weekly initial opening range low comes in at 76 and 95, just higher. You have the weekly open at 7704. This is where I start to take a little off the table. And that's also the break you want to see to give us a little bit more validation, try to play the, um, to try to play the reversal. Now, if we drop down again, okay, now keep in mind, objective weekly opening range tested broke. We tested the opening range's resistance and moved lower. We registered a Thursday, Friday low. So if this is going to maintain that that sort of opening range play, um, you know, wouldn't be too surprised to see this thing slam lower, trigger 76 before rallying. But at the end of the day, the game plan remains unchanged. Both of these levels are levels we're interested in fading on. Okay, stops at break even at this point because you're playing counter trend. Take a little off the table. Extension 77 would get you out. Uh, if we move back, just get out at break even, and then 76.11, 76.12 would be where we would look for, you know, a final exhaustion stretch low. Um, but the game plan is unchanged. A very clean setup, guys, at the end of the day. We're looking for an exhaustion low into multi-year uptrend support. It's the daily chart. One touch, two touch, three touch confirms. It's right there. Okay, we might not get it. Again, the divergent signal is pretty strong here. Uh, it's just at the end of the month, I don't trust any of these moves. I don't trust them for crap. I mean, it's I've been stung too many times in this in this game. So, see so yeah, how we start off the week. All things held constant, looking for exhaustion right down here where we are now. Any questions on Aussie? Eman, can we have a look at Sterling, please? Absolutely. Yeah, let me write that down. Sterling for Eman. Okay, so my favorite, you know, thing that I'm checking out into the close of the month, into the start of, um, what's the next month? April. <laughs> See if we can't get that low in Aussie. Uh, next up on tap, or by the way, so there's no change to any of the Aussie levels from yesterday, okay? Here they are. Uh, as I always know, the, um, the daily and weekly charts are only one click away always. So if you click on that link there, it'll take you to the previous update. Not only where the update is, guys, but it takes you where in the report. It is just give it a second and the mark and the website will actually load it to where uh, the actual update is. So you guys have got all those levels on hand. Dollar CAD, it's been a slow burner. It looked like it was failing to try to break through the weekly opening range highs yesterday, but still there wasn't really a conviction trade to try to short this against. Same type of idea here in that we're looking for this rally in Dollar CAD to fizzle out, ideally ahead of 20, uh, 2970. If we get into 29.70, um, you know, a 30 stop, try to move it lower, it's still what I'm looking for. Remember, we're in a multi-month uptrend channel. It broke. We tried to basically test it as resistance. It rejected. So this could be just a rebound off of the March open support, monthly open support right here at 28.28.9. Um, and on this recovery here, we're looking for failure on a move higher. Now, this data that we just got on weaker Canada GDP figures did offer a spike to a new high for the week, but here's the failure. Momentum failing you know, at 60, essentially, and a decent support trigger looks like could be at hand. Now, when you're drawing support trigger, I like to draw them from the low in price. So this would give you a really short-term trigger. So I don't want to look at that because that's broken already. Let me see what this looks like. And that one has still a little bit there. So if you see a break back below the median line for that formation that we've been following, okay, uh, again, this is actually that Friday close high, then, and a break below momentum, that would be sort of a conviction reversal for me. But just remember, again, broader scale, daily, uh, weekly chart for dollar cad, where we're coming off of big region, big region, multi-year trend line resistance, multi-year upper median line parallel, 618 retracement, uptrend resistance even for the near-term trend off last year's low huge region big old out uh reversal candle okay we're still sitting on that trend line from the 2012 low we're still sitting on that trend line that trend line also converges on the 52 week moving average in green here so monthly open support you have a longer term moving average longer term slope all right here at the lows so again, we weren't surprised to see this bobble here kind of sitting at this level, but this is still the level we need to see break to really open up the further 
uh, downside move. 27.25 being that outside reversal day close from last year. That level coincides in all the regions we just talked about right here. Um, so long story short, still looking for exhaustion below 29.70. Bearish invalidations 130. Uh, downside targets unchanged. So March open 28.29. That's still going to be sort of the level to beat to get this thing going. Watch for a reaction at 27.90, but the real the real play would be on a move down towards this longer term medium line. So let's see if we can't get Dollar Cad finally turning. We loved this last week. We've we've been waiting for this turn in Dollar Cad seems for months, but um, on this rebound and especially with the fact that the strength the dollar saw yesterday couldn't really translate into dollar CAD strength. Um, you know, just relatively speaking on a percent basis uh, return for the day, uh, Swissy, Yen, uh, even Euro, all of those saw way larger losses um, than the CAD did. So dollar CAD higher was limited uh, with regards to dollar strength really being able to push this. And I think that's a tell. I think that's a tell. Maybe you still got a little bit more downside to go here. Any questions on dollar cad? Again, keeping in mind, I'm gonna keep drilling this the whole session that it's the last day of the month, last day of the quarter. If you're gonna tread on stuff, just make sure you tread lightly, lower your leverage and be very selective with your entries. Have a question please about the supernatural pair dollar yen. Oh, you're referring to the abomination E-Man, right? Um, which always does its own magic movement. What is the reason behind that other than it's a correlation with the 10 year yield? So you're absolutely right. Um, you know, we can do dollar dollar cat next if you want, man. So this was number one, number two. We'll do dollar uh, dollar yen rather number three. Here's dollar yen. I mean, it's it's just the nature of the beast. You guys know how how I feel about this trade very clearly. Um, I really couldn't tell you, man. I really couldn't tell you. It's just the way it's traded. Uh, Sterling could make the same argument. It's a very highly professionally traded market. Hey, DeGrand, great to see you in the room. Um, we were going over the Euro trade earlier, so um, maybe I'll hit that again if we have time. But, uh, Iman, well, to, to, to go to your comments to the 10 year, you know what I mean? This thing is obviously pulling off resistance, so we shouldn't have been too surprised. Um, we've been talking about 290 for weeks, uh, and it held. Couldn't get a daily close above that region. 1994 channel resistance, way, way back, multi-decade uptrend channel resistance. Every, you know, resistance on the uptrend and the downtrend, big level. And then we just got the momentum break as well. So everything looks rosy on Tuesday. Then it does its lovely way. Amen. It's talking about dollar yen. So, yeah, I mean, this is why I have such profound respect for this trade. This, It's just stung me too many times. And, again, you know, I was, again, that guy that was trying to fight that whole decline, you know, um, early 2000s, mid 2000s, when we were back up at, you know, 130s, 140s. This was um, sort of irrational to me. But in any event, the big thing that we were looking at was this move below 107.80. That's that's the level that we talked about that gave us the bearish bias early in the year. We mult We broke the whole 2017 range. You have slope support from 2012. Lots of stuff happened there. On this decline, our last level was this pivot low from 2014, came in at 105.19, and it converged on this sliding parallel. Break acceleration, break below was instant resistance, gapped above, support, support. And last week, we closed below. So this week, we were looking just for this drop into 103.40, 103, huge region, big longer term slope, 100% extension off the high. 786 retracement off the low. It's a beautiful spot. Um, and it fizzled out. It fizzled out. It's classic dollar yen. You know, it was really, really um, frustrating. So you guys remember early in the week, we said, okay, let's get up into 105.88, then look to fade again. That's the game plan. We were in this consolidation, sort of triangle play. We got the downside break. It hit 100% extension. That's where we opened the week. We said there is a possibility for a rally. We were waiting for this trigger to break to to fade strength into 105.80. That worked just for the day, and then yesterday we plowed through. So there was an opportunity to take a short from 105.88. You got as deep as 105.30 or so, 105.32, nice 50 pip drop. Then this thing held like a rock, 
rebounded sharply, taking us through the weekly opening range high, and that gives you an upside bias. Now, the next downside, or the last level was 106.65, remember? And we said, look, if this breaks, look for this to be your last region. If it's gonna turn lower, this is the last region that needs to hold. If it gets through this, you know, we're just basing, breaking basic trend line resistance. Well, what the hell is that? You know? Um, based on the momentum signature, based on the turn, based on how price action is reacting, this does look to me to be, uh, you know, possibly a larger reversal. Here's the daily chart. You know what I mean? I do have a set near-term resistance on the daily chart, that 50 line. So we could see a hold here. Obviously, the objective weekly, monthly, excuse me, opening range highs are just higher. Um, this is your monthly open. You're straddling it. So 106.66 is not really going to help us here at this point. So dollar yen starts off next month at a seriously interesting juncture. Okay, look at this momentum trigger from back here in the highs that we made in December or November of last year. We just broke it. So here it is, um, Eman. I mean, I couldn't explain to you why. It's just that was a, a concerted downside trigger, absolutely. Then you got further divergence as, as price action moved lower. Then you got the topside break of the upside trigger. So that kind of invalidates our, our downside bias. And specifically this week, if we close well above 105.19, that would invalidate the break that we got last week. So look, man, for dollar yen, this thing, it's just, you, you see that I go through cycles where I'm all about dollar yen and the yen crosses for like a month and I'm writing about them like every other day. And then you'll see me disappear from dollar yen for like three months in a row. It's just because the price action does this thing where it completely throws me off track and that's okay. There's plenty of opportunity elsewhere. Um, so if you can sense the frustration in my voice with dollar yen, it's there. Now, interestingly enough, I was talking with Jamie yesterday and we were messing around with some uh, different levels. He identified a trend uh, or a pitchfork yesterday. I think we tweeted it out on SB Squawk that could be in play. And that basically also mimics the fact that we're at near-term resistance right now. Okay. So let me clean this up for you real quick. So we'll get rid of these, this triangle formation. Trend line resistance, that's messy break. We're not going to warrant that. But look on the upslope here. On the swing higher, where the high register was right at that median line. So that would suggest near-term support into this region here. Take a retracement off the low to give you an updated target of what might be a decent level. And it's the 50% retracement. Right around here. Whoop. Right around here. With the high, that would necessitate a break of the 50 line. I'd be working with that as sort of your near-term bullish inval. Okay. Uh, obviously, a topside break higher. 107.20 would just be a soft target. Uh, the 2017 low day close should be big, and that's 107.83. And remember, 107.83 is the same level that was the onset of the decline. Okay. Right here. 107.83. So look, you have to be patient with dollar yen from here. I don't think we should take an aggressive stance. Like I said, the reversal of the nature of the advance, the way it advanced, the momentum profile of the advance does suggest that we could be seeing a little bit more of a significant near-term low in place here. Uh, it's all gonna be the tell next week when we start off. If we kick back off this and we break back below 105.80, I wouldn't wanna be on the long side, but certainly all, all things held constant on this decline, I do think you should be looking for support. I do think you should be looking at support, and especially if the weekly close materializes above 105.20 again. Um, so dollar yen, yeah, you want to be very careful with here. There's going to be a lot of chop, I think, before this washes out. Iman, does that offer some clarity on dollar yen? We fall in and out of love with this trade uh, very frequently. At this point, I think it's respect... Uh, I think it's it, it warrants some respect just to kind of sit here and give this a look back on the pullback. But could be heading higher. Could be heading higher.
Yeah, even when you look at the momentum profile from like a 60 minute or an hourly, right? Break into overbought support. Yeah, you probe below 40, but in the near term charts, that'll happen way more often. So break into overbought, broadly support around 40, break into overbought. Here's the grounder. This is where we finally put in the low. This is your first oversold signal since this low, which extended obviously into a new high. Here's the oversold signal again. Now on the pullbacks, we're finding support well ahead of 40 or at 40 on a higher rate. Here's way highest level of overbought that we've attained since, well, since a while back. It's the highest intraday momentum reading that we've seen so far this year. I guess the last time we'd be back here. Let's see what price was doing. Very similar, very similar. So yeah, be cautious here. Don't try to fight dollar yen. Something could be afoot. Okay, so that's the abomination. A little bit out of order today, but um, I think it warrants some some attention. You know, it's going to be something definitely that we'll want to be uh, taking a very close look at. Again, looking for support around that 50 line if this formation is in play. So that's number three. Number four, Sterling CAD. Again, I know it's an interesting cross. Uh, <laughs> um, Probably some of you are thinking, what's up with all these Sterling CAD updates? But the levels are pretty clean. We first highlighted this early, early in the week as we were um, just approaching the daily charts and the weekly charts that were looking like it was heading into a big resistance level. Um, that level was defined by the 50% retracement from the 2016, 2015 declines. You had the median line resistance, channel resistance, all of them uh, right here. So you know, the momentum signature was still an overbought in the weekly position, so we were very cautious about trying to approach this on the shorts. Here's what it looks like on the daily. Um, pretty clean, pretty clean. It's a slow burner, and I do think that, um, you know, obviously some of the losses in the CAD um, have really kept this thing from being able to drop, even though Sterling and CAD are both broadly under pressure. So, Look, on the near-term picture, this is all that really matters at this point. This formation has been holding very, very well. No changes. As we said yesterday, focus remains lower below 82.90. Downside targets 181.05. Uh, and then if you get that drawdown deeper, just above 80.25, I opened it yesterday to 80.40, uh, would be that 50 line for the current slope that we're watching. And that would confluence right with the basic channel support that we've been following off the lows. So that comes in just ahead of 80.25, like 80.40 is where you would start to approach that region. So we'll see if this doesn't, um, you know, finally ma make the larger break lower. The one thing I do want to note is that it could be a bull flag. So if that is the case, um, if it holds a strong rebound into 81, that would scream correction within the bull flag. You'd basically be looking for a topside break before this thing attains a new high. Remember that we're, we're still in the broader uptrend. We've just been playing the short side against this major resistance level that we've been looking at. So, um, you know, no change. 82.92 was the level that we cited as near-term resistance yesterday. Um, I was comfortable with that as being a very decent pivot in price. But at this point, just stick with that upper parallel. Okay, bring it down a little bit. If we get through this 50 line, that would be your last level of resistance. Ultimately, I do want to see a drop here. With a break there, really looking for the subsequent downside targets. But remember, basic channel, slope resistance, the parallel converges right there with the 100% extension. Okay. Any questions on the Sterling CAD update? Here's also a resistance trigger. If you see that give out, also another reason that you might want to bail any short exposure. But pretty clean, surprisingly, uh, considering the pair. You know, I'll continue to follow this one on Sterling Cat. Any questions there? Number four. Last but not least from last night was uh, gold. And this is another one where it just way overshot. Um, we talked about resistance early in the week. 1355, 1356 was the level that we were looking for the kickback. Ultimately, 1330 and I think 1320 was the level that we had highlighted. Uh, where was it? And 1332. Uh, 1340 and 1332 were two levels that we had highlighted that we were looking for this thing to hold support um, to offer some long exposure. Well, 
it plowed through that. Obviously, the dollar strength that we saw yesterday weighed heavily on um, you know, commodities based in US dollars. Obviously, gold typically sees that kick. And like I said yesterday, it just looked like it needed to make a new low. Uh, the 100%, the 1618 extension of the decline gives you 1319, uh, okay? Um, also yesterday, as it were, when we were writing this, it converged on the lower parallel. So look, we're testing the lower parallel right now. We're getting divergence in near-term momentum. I wouldn't be chasing this any lower. And if this formation is going to hold, and I think we would all agree this is a pretty damn clean formation, despite the fact that we cheated on the reference point here. It's just been insane. Ping pong through every single level, okay? And here's the lower parallel. So would I allot this thing? Yeah, another dollar drop into 119 to give you the 1618, sure. But at the end of the day, I'm looking for support right here. If this thing is still gonna move higher, um, you know, I wanna start to see support hold at these levels. We've had a big old outside day reversal right off the high that turned our attention lower. But again, 1340 and 1332 were levels that we were looking for a hold. Now that we've broken below that, this is sort of the last ditch effort. Okay. So look for support in gold early in the week, uh, early in the month. And uh, we'll still need to get above 1340 to get constructive again. But um, as far as the decline is concerned, this is where you want to start to see support. Any questions on gold? That's number five on the session. Okay. Um, what's next here? SPX. Here is Spoo. So, Previous update, we talked about the SPX. We've been following this chart uh, for quite some time here in the webinars, and the big area of support it's been staring at us blindly in the face for, for, for days now is still what the market has been pivoting on. It's 25.86. The 200-day moving average has since moved um, to about 25.91. So let me just move that up a little bit. There we go. 25.93. Is that too high? Yeah. There we go. Okay, this region right here. Whoops. Uh, this is the 618 extension from the decline off the yearly highs, really long-term extension. 200-day moving average, okay? And on the weekly charts, if you take a longer term view on the SPX, I showed you this yesterday, basic parallel support. This is a sliding parallel of the same slope that we've been following from the lows in 2015. Boom, boom, boom. This was really the big level that we've been watching all week. So it's going to be critical here. Um, you know, is the market propensity to break this thing down on a, into the close of the month and quarter on the last day on thin market conditions? You know, it would be a serious gut check if it did happen today. The drop would probably be pretty precipitous. Um, I personally don't think you get it per se. You know, you never know. Obviously, we got a half hour before the market open here. But this is all that matters for me into the close of the month, guys, into the close of the week, into the extended holiday weekend. Uh, it's 2586 into 2592 now. 200-day moving average, that confluence region. If we break lower, this is the near-term slope that we've been following. 240, bringing it a little cleaner. Okay. And at this point, let's adjust our levels just a tad. Near-term resistance, 26.75. Downside target still remains unchanged at 25.30. If we do see the break, that's the yearly low. Um and then you start to kick out these support levels, obviously based on the slope in time, it gets kicked out a little further, but still 24.53 would be the 100 off the high, so two equal legs um, takes you down there. None of this matters. None of these downside targets matter unless this key threshold breaks. This is all that matters for the SPX today, okay? If we get through near-term resistance at this point, it'll be right around here. Yesterday's highs come in just higher around 2630. 
yeah, you probably get the extension play back to the highs um, of with, within this near-term formation. But, you know, weakness sub 2586 could be disastrous. It really could be for uh, for the broader risk markets. Not only just based on a high-low type of play, but also based on slope for the longer-term formation we've been following. Big implications. Okay, you're seeing some disruption today. Uh, some Trump tweets coming out about Amazon and uh, you know all that stuff. There is a lot of market commentary crossing the wires. It's just I've been sitting here this morning laughing, um, you know, on whether Trump is going to start you know targeting specific industries and and whatnot. But uh, we'll keep focused on what the markets are saying at this point. You're testing pretty huge support in the S&P. Any questions on risk, SPX? Okay, um, let's circle back here and hit the DXY. We'll go into, um, we'll go back and hit the Euro and then we'll hit Aussie Yen real quick before we wrap things up. So <clears throat> uh, DXY looks like this. So very similar, right, to the dollar yen, and it blew through the target. So we'll remember on this trade earlier this week, we were looking for a recovery to start the week after we dumped here. We turned just ahead of support. 88.90 was the sweet spot. We turned just ahead of it. We broke through the weekly opening range highs. Objectively, that puts you bullish looking for a Thursday, Friday high. Here we are. So what is this exactly? Well, I'm inclined to get rid of this um, slope at this point. Let me just see what this looks like and work with something like this. Okay. Um, so really quick, sorry about that. Do top down again, uh, Ruth, I got you on both of those coming right up, Euro and Sterling. Um, but just to get the broader picture, so DXY, big, big spot. We've been talking about this key range, 91.33, 88.70. I'm sorry, that's still the big range that we're talking about with the DXY. Um, you know, if we were to bypass that dip low that we made in the analog, then it would still a lot for a rally back into that region before dipping lower again, but nothing changes, guys. And that's the kind of thing that's a little frustrating because you see these trends that start to take root, starting to follow the analog. We got all excited earlier this week because we thought we might get the follow through. Here's the reversal. We're still below trend resistance and momentum. We're still below price resistance on the um, on the analog and in the chart. Yeah, I could still find a little bit more re uh, of, a, of a leg stretch higher near 90.33, 90.37, but, um, I don't want to get too excited on the long side here. Still heading into the close of the month, all we've done is basically make a round trip. Here's your monthly open, right? So immediate focus range 89.90 into 80 into 90.21. This is it. If we start to break lower, could still see resumption. I'm not giving up on it. But to head into the close of the month, head into the close of the week, guys, you know the propensity or for a drop in, or a, a rally back towards near 90.36, 90.35 is still there. Still could get it. Okay. This is last week's open, by the way, so don't pay attention to that. So um, that's the DXY. Where does that leave us on Euro? This will be number eight. So here's what the, the Euro looks like at this point. Again, um, you know, we were looking for support at 2317, 2321. This is the level I would have loved to see hold. At this point, now that we've dribbled back below that slope from February resistance, 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 break, break, resistance, resistance. I still think you can get the drop towards 22.75. Um, and I know Jamie's looking lower in the euro, guys, but ultimately for me on the near term uh, approach, 22.66, you know, that's this level right here. The 50% retracement and the lower parallel. Hasn't been the cleanest formation, but it's something I'll look for. And then basic slope support off that low from, you know, April of last year is still in play. Still in play. Gun to my head, I still think it moves lower from here. 
uh, but I wouldn't want to chase it anything beyond 2275, 2266. I really want to see what, what market does there. If we find some sort of support at that region, that was the high day reversal close or low day reversal close for the for the month, guys. This was January 1st right here. That was the monthly low. That was an outside day reversal off monthly lows. And the close was right here at 2267. Again, 2275 is actual 50 slope support. So I would like to see another drop into that region. Um, I know it's a ways away from where we are right now, guys, but ultimately 2409 is what I would need to see pop for me to get constructive again. I'm not going to get caught on Euro. We're just starting off the second quarter. Kind of want to see how this thing opens up on, on Sunday. Um, even Sunday, you want to be careful because it's the holiday. So on Monday, uh, and European markets are still closed on Monday. So let's see how we open up the month. Ultimately, ideal scenario, 2275 on a stretch, 2240, but you start to see a little bit more of a support bounce here if we're going to hold this upslope in euro. Okay, questions? Ruth, anything specific on the euro that you're looking for? Remember, again, this is the weekly chart that we've been following on the euro. The fact that we've broken above this median line ever since we did, we haven't making, making, we haven't made any closes below. Okay. Um, and this, you know, ultimately could still be just one last consolidation before we rip to tag that 26 level, then turn around. I don't know. But ultimately, I can't get super bearish until we clear these lows. Not sure why it's going so low. So Ruth, don't try to, you know, you don't have to try to, uh, you know, assign a fundamental reason. It's supply and demand, guys. Just think of it as a, as a just cage match with the bulls and the bears. Sometimes the, the, the bulls are going to win, and there's going to be more buyers, and that flood of buying is going to push things higher, and sometimes the vice versa. There's not necessarily something that's fundamentally changing, guys, on each one of these shifts. <laughs> this is just markets being markets. So all we can do is try to position ourselves in the best scenario. We thought this was a breakout of a multi-month trendline resistance. We got a beautiful run into resistance. On the pullback, we were looking to get back long as long as it stayed back above that slope. Now that we're below that slope, you know, I wouldn't be too surprised if we sink a little lower, but we still want to stay constructive, right? We're still above that slope, haven't made a weekly close below, still above basic trendline support off April low, haven't made a close below that. And also note that the weekly, uh, excuse me, the monthly objective op opening range has not broken, right? We broke through it, but we couldn't close on either of these days. So that just means that heading into next month, we still have to be mindful of that range. So overall bullish, Ruth, overall, I would say, yeah, this is a constructive trade overall, right? Looking at this from the 2015 lows, you're a couple of thousand pips higher, right? So yes, yeah, so overall, it's a constructive trade, but within that trend, we are coming off of early in the year uptrend resistance. So even if you're gonna test down, uh, if you, excuse me, even if you're gonna test uptrend support, Ruth, that still means price can drop this low and not invalidate that broader uptrend. Now, does that mean it's not going to? I don't know. It could get here and plow through, and that point we'd have to shift our, shift our broader up, up, upside bias, right? But as it stands right now, we're pulling back within the confines of an uptrend. For near-term guys like us, that's the opportunity to play the pullback. Medium-term guys, swing guys, longer-term guys, you're looking for that pullback to buy. If we were to break through this support, or if this turns out to be much more than just a correction within the uptrend, then we would have to shift our bias for the possibility of a much steeper decline. Okay? A basic conservative range trade, guys, for this high, for this range. If it breaks the lows here for the monthly open below 22, um, you know, objective target would take it down as low as 118. If then, right, that's what trading is. As long as we stay within the confines of this uptrend, you're still constructive. Make sense? It says, okay, right on. And guys, if things, again, if things get a little bit where they're, kind of shaky, they're kind of hairy, you're starting to lose your conviction, your, your confidence on the trade, that's okay. I hate these cliches, but being flat is a position. And on this type of market conditions, when we're heading into a liquidity trap on an extended holiday weekend, yeah, you betcha. I'm playing as defensive as I can, if not at all.
So clarity will come with time. I think we just have to be mindful of the fact of the conditions that we're currently trading in. I didn't see that one coming. You know, I thought this decline would settle back above this trend line. Here would be the ideal spot. Since we're doing this now and we got a couple hours left for the month, I'm not going to mess with this. I just don't think it's, uh, I, it's just not my game plan. Now, uh, let's jump into Sterling real quick before we um, move on to uh, Aussie Yen. So, Iman, this is for you. Here's what Sterling looks like. Again, I'm thinking look for some support near term. Um, I've been looking at this basic slope, you know, it kind of bottomed there early in the session as we woke up um, or as I woke up today. But on this trade, you got to also keep it at basics. This is just noise here into the close of the month. At the end of the day, this is constructive. It's been constructive, very clean uptrend. I don't like that the median line this year hasn't really served us well, right? The sliding parallel for the same slope has been pretty fruitful. Okay, on the overshoot, no problem. But the median line has been kind of messy. Still keeps the broader focus higher above 36.75. Here's the 200 long week moving average. Um, you know, you could see a little bit more chop, sideways action, maybe some more consolidation before finally breaking higher. Ultimately, similar picture in that this is a constructive outlook, in my opinion. Sterling on a daily. Looks like this. High day close for the year came in at 41.34. That break really had me excited that we're going to get the continuation, or at least the test of the high close. Here we are breaking back below into the monthly close, quarterly close. I have no clue what to do here. This is not a trade for me. You're right in the middle of the monthly range. You could still get a drop into four into 39.30 without even interrupting the trend. And what am I gonna do, try to buy here? There's no stop conviction. There's no short conviction. For me, this is not a trade that I would be looking at at this point. Eman, are you in a position here? I'll give you some pointers on where we are in position. Again, basic trend line slope support break here suggests you still have some further downside to go. See if we can get a near term picture here, if there's any slope or anything we can work with. Now give you resistance right here. High day close, again, 41.34, same level that we were excited about. We closed above it last week. That's still now converging on basic slope. A downside break from here, you're basically looking for this pivot level right at There might be an opportunity here. I know I was looking for looking for a fresh long opportunity, says E-Man. So there might be an opportunity here into the U.S. trade session. I'm getting some divergence into that low. If you get that pop through that resistance trigger with a move above 4084, it might be worth a shot for a 4134 run. It's like a 50 pip run to the upside. Um, you know, unfortunately, your stop would need to be against 4038. So I'm not sure how comfortable you're putting one to one stop risk to reward. Not my cup of tea. But that would be the only opportunity here if this breaks lower. You know, there's not really a conviction stop that I would I'd be comfortable with, but you'd be looking for a drop in your 39.79. You know, it's another, another 60 pips to the downside. Yeah, but man, I would just be cautious. You know what I'm saying? I, it could rebound towards 41.34, but I wouldn't want to get too comfortable on a downtrend or on a on a buy. Uh, objectively, this you know. <sighs> It's they're all messy. The ranges are all messy this week. But if this is a break of the weekly opening range lows, uh, you'd be risking you know that Friday low in price. Ideal scenario, yeah, you hold here and you see a rally towards 41.34. I would love to see this break test the support, then move higher. To be honest with you, remember we're we're constructive sterling on the longer term approach. It's just that this brutal dollar strength that's coming out of nowhere. 
um, it seems to be putting a cap on things in your term. So you need some serious sterling strength. All right, wish I had a little bit more color on, on this, guys, for you, but market conditions are what they are. I'm not going to push a trade or advocate that you guys get aggressive on days like today or tomorrow. Um, you know, for all intents and purposes, like I said, my book is closed. If I find that Aussie gives me another opportunity, uh, let's revisit the Aussie. Um, Dagon is in the room. Dagon, so I was looking through your email real quick on the Aussie dollar trade. Man, that was a beautiful entry. Yeah, you got nothing that you nailed that one right on. Um, your, your question to me personally, did I take it? Unfortunately, I did not. Uh, like I was telling everyone in the room before you got in, I don't you know, try to fade big declines or trade major moves like this on, on the last day of the month or the quarter. It's just very, very bad. These are our worst trading conditions, guys, as near-term traders, right? Swing, you know, longer-term guys, this, this is just noise. Uh, for a swing guy or for an intraday guy like me, this could be, you know, this is where I sometimes get my, like literally my ass handed to me, so I'm not going to push it, um, push it today. That said, just going on the charts that you sent me, Digon, that was an ideal entry, my man. It was an ideal entry. You had a really tight stop. It was the key critical level that we've been talking about for months. Um, and no guts, no glory, right? So, so nice trade on that. I was telling everyone in the room that we're trading counter trend on that rebound, right? We've been looking for that Aussie exhaustion low for months. So on the initial approach, like what you did, you got on it on the initial drop lower. You want to be really nimble with those. So watch momentum carefully. Uh, you know, let's jump into the 60 minute chart here, get a little closer of a picture. So here's 60, right, in momentum. If it starts to fail ahead of that, you start to see a recovery back below swing lows, you might want to just take a little off the table, bring your stops to break even. Because I was telling guys earlier, it's the last day of the month. It's the last day of the quarter. Real thin market conditions. You have a holiday weekend, so you're going to have a lot of guys are going to take off early even as the market's closed today. I wouldn't be surprised if you get some huge sudden washout and this thing drops right into 76.11 as the dollar just rips into the end of the month, right? Could be a play. I don't know. Um, so for me, my game plan was to kind of see how we close the month, see how we close today. If we get a drop closer to 76.11, that's the final last ditch effort that'd be two equal legs so this is correction that's where you want to find support longer term that's also that 2016 trend line support line right there um but the beginning range was 7636 7644 that's what we put in the report and you got it right on digon now the problem the, the one thing i always want to you know caution everyone is when you get a trade like that you're looking for a level you want the market to turn it dips into it and you get in you're super excited now all of a sudden you're thinking Oh man, I'm gonna hold this till 7760, right? I got a great entry. Mm -mm -mm. Have to be respectful of the fact that turn trading to turn is never quite that simple. This thing could go probe the lows again. Like I said, it could test 7612 again. It doesn't mean that you want to give up the rebound idea altogether. It just means that until we get the extension break of some sort of downtrend resistance, then you want to be super nimble. Sometimes so for trading the turn, I got to get in it like three or four times before I actually get the extended play. So on a trade like this, okay, great. As soon as I get a quarter of the daily TR, take a little bit off, bring stop to break even. If it breaks lower and stops me out again, no harm, no foul. I took a little bit off that trade. I'll look for re-entry again at 76.36 or 76.17. Again, it might drop into here again and move higher. Take a little off the table, bring your stops to break even. If it doesn't break through, take the break even stop, no problem. If it drops again into this problem, into this drop, into this support, excuse me. Um, once again, I'll look to trade that. You know what I mean, Dagon? Trading the turn is always gonna be a, it's gonna be an, a, a test of, 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 of patience, okay? Um, and discipline, you know? If I was in this position, and then again, I took a little bit off here and we broke through 77, the objective weekly open, basic trend line resistance. Well, now I'm holding on to that core position. If we get a pull back, Look for re-entry to add to it. So don't always think that you got to pile in at the lows because this is the best entry and I hope this is going to be the low because hope is, you you took the words out of my mouth, Dagon. Probabilities, hope is not a strategy, right? Um, so I just want you to recognize that. But as far as the email that you sent me, your, your, I mean, that was an ideal entry. At a very tight stop is a key level, well played. But until we get the breach of a downtrend resistance, you want to trade it within with that recognition that you're trading counter trend.
okay? With regards to the other question that I got on um, uh, Sterling, uh, fantastic help. Thank you very much, says the gun. Hey, you're more than welcome. With Sterling, and there's a lot of people who ask the same question. You know, a lot of times you look at my charts and you'll see that I'm using the FXIDC ICE, ICE feed, um, where, you know, sometimes Jamie or even me on the near term charts will be using the FXCM feed. Um, listen, to answer your question, uh, th the reason I do that is because once we had the, once we had the Brexit break, Okay, that took price into lows we hadn't seen uh, for decades, and FXCM price feeds do not go back uh, quite this, this. You know, they don't go back anything pre 1995, I think. So for me to start finding lows and and be able to track, you know, longer term where this thing has come off of, you need a price feed that goes back uh, quite a ways. So the ICE price feed goes back to 1971, so it gave us the opportunity to be able to take some measured moves from those lows in price. Uh, FXCM's feed just did not. That's the only difference. Now, Degon, the only other thing I want to put it, he says, I got it. All right. The only other thing I want to note on that, Degon, is, I mean, obviously, since that happened, that's why I moved to this feed and I just haven't moved off since. Now that we're recovering off those lows, I should probably be looking at the FXCM feed because the only caveat with this feed is that their closes is not the 5 p.m. close in New York. It's a little bit different because they're using a, um, you know, a different feed. So I think the close here is like 6 p.m. So it kind of, jacks up the high day, high week, closes a little bit. Um, that being said, that's the only difference in price. That's why you might want to, that's why you, you might see that I'm using this feed. It's just because at, ever since post Brexit, you've had to use price action that goes back um, way further out than the FXCM feed offers. Okay. All right, I think I got everyone's questions. Last but not least, I, I mean, we can talk about Aussie N real quick. Um, you know, this is basically the make or break level. Nothing's changed on this since yesterday. We talked about the break here. Objectively would leave us looking lower, checking 79.45. The reversal here is holding near-term former support, now resistance. The emphasis on this trade heading into the end of the week is whether you make it above 82, 81.97 or not. Um, on the intraday charts, looking at this uh, for Aussie Yen, you know, there was the key level that we reversed off of. It was a 618 retracement. You had slope in there as well. Nice, nice spot. Uh, looking for the upside while above um, 8067 is what we noted on Monday. You got the drop here, grounded at 8075 before rebounding. And here's that key resistance level again. It's not on the daily chart, but this is why we have these multi time frame analysis pieces for you. So it's not really that evident on the daily or intraday charts, but on the weekly charts, boy, is it big. Okay, so if we make it through here on a closed basis for the week for Aussie N, I do think there's plenty of upside to go. Um, if we hold this range, guess what? The weekly opening range never broke. You look for that to carry over into next week. Um, and again, ultimately, you look for that break to give you some guidance. But if we break higher, it would dis or invalidate that downside break, keeping in mind that dollar yen already did it. Oops, on the weekly chart, right? Dollar yen broke below this level and we already pushed back above. So this is already posted an outside weekly reversal off the low. So that's further yen weakness or a tell of yen weakness to come. That could mean Aussie yen just needs that last little nudge to get us through here to start playing higher again. Okay. So look, a lot of things on the menu, guys, uh, into the close of the week. If you don't have any pending positions on, um, <laughs> it's a good time to enjoy the weekend. Take the time off. We have a brand new quarter to start, brand new month on tap as we head into the weekend. Um, and we'll get clarity. We'll get clarity. Just, just keep in mind that this, this last, you know, tomorrow the markets will be open technically for FX, but you know, equity markets will be closed. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be chasing anything radical or any gnarly price action you see over the next 48 hours. Uh, a good time to kind of just reset the books, recharge your batteries, and we'll start things afresh next week. Uh, if there are no other questions from anyone, um, I'm going to wish you all a blessed and happy holiday for those of you who are celebrating. Um, if not, um, there won't be an update tonight, guys. I'm not going to advocate any new positioning heading into tomorrow. Obviously, that's just silly. So uh, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Iman. Degan, same to you, my man. Um, enjoy. He says, I'm taking the next four days off. Enjoy, my friend. Happy Easter to you too, Pete. Uh, guys, take care. Have a great weekend, and I will see you on um, Tuesday. Uh, right back here for another intraday strategy webinar, guys. Cheers. JR, same to you, Peter.
Take care, guys.